Hi there, this is David Simon. I'm just going to tell you a bit about how I put together a fairly typical panel for Crimson Dark. What I've got here is um, uh, I've pretty much gone past the creative stage of the process. So this is more an emphasis on the technical side of what goes into creating a panel. I've got two different pieces of line art here. There's the stuff which I rendered in Cinema 4D and there's the stuff which I've drawn by hand in Adobe Illustrator. I've uh, laid one layer on top of the other in Photoshop, set it to multiply and what I need to do now is just go through and uh, fix up all the overlap so that you can't see essentially their bodies showing through the clothes. So to that end I've just gone into uh, the lower layer, I've got a nice, uh, thick, uh, hard uh, brush, and I'm going through and just painting out all of the lines which are supposed to be covered by the by the clothing that I've drawn on top of that. Uh, also fixing up a few of the artefacts around the eyes and so forth. Cinema 40 isn't perfect. I have to go through and uh, make some changes so it looks just the way I want. It's... Um, Fairly straightforward process, uh, a bit time-consuming at times, so I'm uh, speeding up some of the stuff which I go through here. Uh, some of these sections are actually double speed, just so you don't get too bored. Uh, at some points I need to go and add some extra lines, because I realise it didn't do everything properly in uh, Illustrator, and it's important that everything be... Uh, properly uh, closed uh, for a later stage, which uh, you'll see here in a moment. Now it's time to start uh, filling in the colours. I select uh, the area. This is why it's important that it be a single closed area. Um, I use the magic wand. I expand it by uh, one pixel and I create a new layer be below the lines and fill it in. Uh, I've set the, I set the line layer to multiply and I've merged those two, uh, the overlying and the underlying line art together into a single image. Here I've realised that I've made, I've missed a few points, uh, missed a few areas of Larissa's dress there, so I'm just going through and fixing that up. Now I do basically the same pro process, I select the area, expand the selection a little bit so it overlaps the line art, create a new layer and uh, fill in the colour in this case, it just happens to be um, black. Oh, I don't use a straight black, I use a slightly... I use a fairly dark grey, uh, just so I can easily distinguish it from the lines itself. Uh, and finally I just fill in a little uh, clasp for a shawl, shawl there. Make that a nice, simple silvery colour, I can deal with that later. Now you can see um, there's the original render uh, combined with the flat clothing that I've placed on top of it. That's a good start. Now what I do is I take the original render which has the characters nude, I copy that above the fill colour and I then delete everything around it and then uh, desaturate the image so it's just grayscale and here what I'm doing is smudging, using the smudge tool to uh, ex expand, first of all expand the skin so it covers all of the clothing and then once I've done that, I'll start using the smudge tool to create the illusion of folds and creases as you would expect to see in uh, in organic clothing, you might say. The big advantage of doing this way, of copying the layer below and uh, instead of just airbrushing it, uh, is that you get to keep all of the lighting information that came with uh, the skin render, that um, you're consistent with the rest of the scene in terms of where the light's coming from, how intense it is, and so forth. It saves a lot of labour and a lot of effort. Now the next step is to, once you've got that desaturated layer, to duplicate that twice. Lower layer set to multiply, adjust the levels so that you've got sh some shadow and you've got enough colour showing through. The other layer you've set to screen 
and then again you adjust the level so you've just got that slight little highlight there of where the light is you know, reflecting a little off the clothing. Uh, now it's the same basic process of all clothing. Uh, with Larissa's dress it's a little bit easier because uh, she happens to be wearing black. Uh, that means I don't need to go through the process of um, overlaying the colour. So it's simply I just uh, use the smudge tool uh, to create creases and folds and then I'll just uh, adjust the levels afterwards uh, to get the right uh, the right balance between light and dark to make it look like a black dress instead of a grey dress which is how it looks at the moment. Use the same process for the shawl. It is a rather, um, in one sense, it's, it's one of the more tedious parts of working on a page, but for some reason I find this part of it rather therapeutic. I, I find it uh, enjoyable, almost a challenge in a sense, trying to uh, create the illusion of uh, clothes that are interacting with the 3D world, because uh, this is all being done two-dimensionally, and I, I quite enjoy the challenge of making everything look like it, it belongs in the same scene together. I don't always succeed, um, but it's fun. I enjoy it. Here I've duplicated uh, all of their skin, um, which I uh, rented uh, as a separate uh, layer for compositing's sake. Um, I duplicate that. I adjust the levels and then I set it to linear dodge. That way I create a nice little highlight for the skin which makes them look a bit more realistic. Now with Vega, um, because it's using a white guy's uh, skin texture, I don't actually have any black textures. Uh, I just put them through a process which I call blackifying, um, which involves adding a extra multiply layer on top, um, adding some very... Uh, another uh, level of his skin with screen, adjust the level and brightness, contrast and so forth. Finally I uh, select all of the layers which have uh, had any kind of clothing on them. Um, I sample the ambient lighting, um, in this case from the white tablecloth, bring it to the extreme, paste the colour over it, set the layer to colour mode and then adjust the opacity so that uh, it blends in uh, the sense that everything is lit consistently with everything else because the clothing uh, didn't have that colour originally. Oh, of course, you know, an artist's work is never finished, it's only ever abandoned. I came back to this the next day, realised there are a few more things I wanted to do to it. Uh, first of all, just need to add a few shadows uh, to show Larissa's shawl uh, affecting her skin. Um, it was looking pretty flat beforehand, not very realistic. Uh, next step, I just need to paint in the clasp. It was, again, looking flat. Uh, I just need to give it a bit of shadow around the edges. Um, that's uh, simple. Both these steps just use the airbrush. It's very straightforward. I always um, take another look at uh, each panel I render the day after because there's normally something that I've missed, something I've forgotten. Finally, there's the uh, the light from the candle. I create a new layer, I just fill a circle with black, then I render a lens flare in the centre of that. Um, I apply Gaussian blur so it doesn't have uh, as much detail as it, so it doesn't look like a lens flare anymore. Uh, position it properly, then uh, Go to hue saturation, colorize it, give it a nice sort of candle like glow about it. Set the layer to linear dodge. And adjust the brightness and contrast. That way uh, it comes up with a nice strong glow effect. And finally, I just adjust uh, the, I just transform the size, I move it around, make it 
you know, the right shape and dimensions until it looks like a tongue of flame, or in this case, simulated flame. And that's pretty much it. Thanks for listening and watching. I hope you found this moderately informative, or at least mildly distracting. <laughs>